welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I'm Eileen, and this is Eileen Ashley is Red Hot and Flashy. And we're back at it again with foundation. So if you've been following me, you know that I hate foundation. I haven't found any that I really like. And I think, to be honest with you, I really think it is me because I think I'm expecting so much more than what a foundation will do. I kind of think I'm expecting it to turn me 20. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back in to the uh, foundations that I have, and I do have a lot, and I'm gonna do a different technique that I've been seeing um, on the internet. And let's see how it works for my mature skin and see if it gets if it can get me to like any of these foundations. So what I'm gonna to use today is the IT Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Foundation Plus Skin Care. And I have two here because um, they don't have a big shade range. And I have the Light Neutral 22 and the Light Cool 20 because neither one worked by itself. Um, the shade did not work for me by itself. So I'm going to combine them and hopefully it'll give me my shade. So I was watching Wayne Goss, and if you don't know who he is, he's a celebrity makeup artist, probably in his 40s, and um, he's really good on not only his makeup, but um, on mature skin. So what he said was that um, it's not the wrinkles that make us look old, although obviously they contribute to that. However, it is our skin tone and... Um, not having an even one. So you can see, I mean, obviously I have freckles, so I'm never gonna have an even skin tone unless I cover them. But like you can see, I have some redness going on. I still have a damn pimple over here. But you can see I have some, some redness and darkness. Um, and he says that having, um, what's it called? An even skin tone gives us a more youthful appearance even um, with wrinkles. So we're gonna see, check this out. I'm going to um, take one pump of the lighter color and I think two pumps of the darker color. It might be too much uh, foundation, but oh my goodness, I forgot the primer. Um, huh, I'm gonna keep that on my hand real quick. But today I'm gonna to use the uh, Touch and Soul Glassy. I actually love the way it makes my skin feel. I'm just gonna put this all over my face. Then I'm gonna go in with a foundation brush. This is the Morphe M439. And I'm gonna kinda of mix that together. Oh yeah, that looks good. Two pumps and one pump. And I'm just gonna put it on my face. We wanna kinda of buff it. We wanna make sure that it gets into your wrinkles, because I don't know if this ever happened to you. But if it sits on top, here, I'm gonna show you. So I just let that sit on top, right? If you get it close. Watch what happens when you see the inside of my wrinkle. You see there's no foundation there. So it looks really stupid when you're talking and your mouth is moving and your wrinkle <laughs> is not, you know, is showing two different colors. It really makes it look bad. So I make sure that they're all filled in. Because I'm gonna show you another technique that I learned from Wayne Goss, and I actually like it a lot. Because if you remember, I am not a foundation girl. Okay, now I'm gonna take my damp beauty sponge and just go over it. Because I like to make sure it's really melted in. What I do love is you take a tissue and just wrap it around your sponge and very lightly and kind of like twisting motion, just tap over your face and it removes any excess. So you can see right here. <laughs> And I like the way it looks. That technique definitely helped my pores, not so much my wrinkles. But like he said, what makes the appearance of us even looking older is the fact that our skin is uneven, the tone is uneven, and evening it out. Did I say that right? Yes. Evening it out helps us look more youthful. So that's that tip. The next one is 
Um, I'm going to try this out. I've never used it. It's by Vanity Makeup and it is the Sculpt and Glow Palette Fair Trio for fair complexions. And this is, let me open it up. This is what it looks like. I know it's awfully fair, but it's cream products. And I, I, want, it, I want to try, let's see what, what it looks like. I'm going to take my KVD uh, brush that I got from BoxyCharm. It's brush number 10. I'm going to use this for to contour my face because I like the way it is shaped. So I took a little bit on the brush. Well, that's a lot. Let's see what happens. Oh. Ooh, that looks like it might be a nice color for my complexion. I'm going to stop right there for now and start blending it out. Let's see how this blends. Just in case, because I don't know how fast it might set up and then uh, I can't blend it out. <laughs> I actually really like the color. I didn't think I would. But we're going to go in and... Uh, buff it a little better because it looks like I just got a line on me. And then I'm going to uh, contour my jaw. I'm also going to contour my nose today. I'm going in with a smaller brush. This is the Morphe M173. And I'm just going to go down my nose. And then I'm just going to buff that out. All right, now I'm gonna go in with the highlighter. Not the highlighter, well, highlight. It's not a highlighter. I think I'm gonna go back in with the dark one. I like the way this is <laughs> applying. And then I'm gonna use my sponge to blend it. Wow, look at how nice this looks. Who oh, no. knew? I might have to order another one of these as a backup. This looks great, I think. I forgot my chin. Did my cubits bow a little bit. Oh, I really love this. Nice. Oh, my skin looks great. So the next, um, is this highlighter. Well, let's take a look. I'm gonna put some on my finger here. This is what it looks like on the finger. I don't know if it's a highlighter or or just a light cream. Like you could, I think, I actually think it would look good under the eyes. Just to brighten up the eye area. Holy crap, I love this. I can't believe it. <laughs> Let me see up close. Let me get my mirror. Wow. I'm shocked that I really, really like this. Honestly, I think it's this. I think it's the vanity makeup that I love so much. But we're not done yet. I'm going to then go in with a cream blush. Since we're working on creams here, I have my Natasha Denona Love Cheek Duo. And the blush in here is cream blush. So we're going to use that. I think I'm gonna use the sponge. Let's see what happens with it. I put a little on. I got. I always put some across my face because you know that's where the sun hits. So if you've got that sun-kissed look, make sure you put it across your nose. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, I think I found my technique. I don't know. I look good on camera. We're going to see after. All right, let's go in with bronzer because I still need my bronzer. But before I do that, I'm going to set my under eyes. I know it seems like it's a little late, but I'm going to tap out. I'm using my Charlotte Tilbury uh, airbrush uh, finishing powder. I'm just going to tap underneath to make sure there's nothing there. You know, no creases. I mean, with my baby sponge, I'm going to, I'm going to put some on here. See that? And I'm just going to press it in. That was another tip that I found from, uh, 
another YouTuber. I'm so sorry. I really got to start writing the names down of everybody. But she did it this way. Actually, she used this too, the uh, Charlotte Tilbury. But I understand the number seven finishing powder is quite the dupe of Charlotte Tilbury, although I don't have it, so can't use it. But she sets it with her uh, sponge because she gets to press it in instead of just like wiping it across the face. So that's what we're trying today. She sets her whole face this way. I don't know. Now we're gonna go into some powders. I'm gonna get my um, MAC bronzing powder, which is very well loved, as you could say. This is shade golden. And I'm just gonna take a fluffy brush, like a blush brush, and go in where we did the contour. Just to add some warmth to my pale face. I totally forgot one of the hacks I wanted to try. Darn it. I need a lip plumper. Now I forgot uh, one of the videos that I was watching said to put a lip plumper on before you start your makeup. Just so it gives time for the lip plumper to work. So we normally put like lip plumper either on bare skin or but a lot put it on top of um, lipstick. So because it's a gloss usually. So she says to put it on prior to putting anything anything on your face so that it gives a chance for the lip plumper to really work its magic. So I the only lip plumper I have is the Charlotte Tilbury one. Anyway, we're gonna see if this extra step works. So we're gonna put that on. Unfortunately, I already started all my makeup, but okay, the next thing, um, I just wanna add a little more blush and I'm actually really loving the Kosas, um, what's this called? Longitude Zero Color and Light Pressed Blushes. And it's got two colors. Oh, hold on. And I like to just mix them. I, I really love the combo together. So I just, I just go in like this, mix them. All right, kids, next step is gonna be my eyebrows. You guys know if you've been following me, that's another uh, thing I'm on a mission for is the right color eyebrow pencil. Haven't been able to find for redheads. They make eyebrow pencils for redheads, but they're too brown. They're all too brown. However, the one I found I probably would use um, more often than not is the new House Laboratory brow pencil in the color cinnamon because at least it's not like total brown. Oops, but here's what it looks like. And, and you can even see like the top where it's brown, it's brown. It, it drives me crazy. But I'm gonna um, just fill them in real quick. And then I'm gonna show you a little trick that I do to match my brows better. <laughs> Okay, I filled them in real quick. And I know that on camera, this does not look bad. This looks like it matches my hair. But in real life, it's brown. So, I'm gonna show you what I do. So, the Natasha Denona palette that we got in our BoxyCharm has, let me open it up for you, has this orange color, the coral color, and this color. I mix them together and put them in here. So I'm just gonna take an angle brush and dip them into the two colors, but lightly. I mean, not dark, because we don't want harsh lines. Let me get my mirror for this. And then I'm just gonna stamp it along. And then I'm gonna go in with the spoolie and make sure that's blended. You have to be careful when doing it though, because you could uh, have really harsh lines. So you really gotta blend that good. There you go. To me, I, <laughs> I know that on camera, it probably comes off the same, but it's not. Off camera, it looks like the color of my hair. Trust me, it really makes a difference. So for all you red hats out there, or even blondes, eyeshadow will work for you. And then go in with, um, what do you call this? Eyebrow gel. Just so you could set that, set your brows and set that color in there. 
Now I look like I have red eyebrows instead of brown ones. So that's just another little trick that I didn't get from anybody. I did that on my own and I'm sure I didn't invent it because don't they sell brow powder or brow, something like that. So I didn't invent it. I just saw the colors. I'm like, I bet you that would look good in my eyes, brows. So let's move on to eyeshadow. I'm gonna try a new eyeshadow that I just got from BoxyCharm. It is the Huda Beauty to Topaz Obsessions. And this is the colors. I'm gonna do something really quick, really simple. And I'm gonna use also, I bought some Moda um, um, brushes, Moda Metallics from BoxyCharm. <laughs> I think it was buy one, get one free or something like that. And I have um, a friend of mine who follows me that she um, just swears by these. So I wanted to try them. These are cool. This one's shaped in a triangle. Let me put some um, primer on those eyes. And since it's right in front of me, I'm just going to use my NARS paint pot. So there's no shades on the on the box. So we're just gonna start out with this lightest color. It's a matte color in the corner. I'm sorry, in the uh, crease. Oh. So it says a transition shade. Now this is a triangle, so I guess I'll try it this way. And I'm just gonna pat the color first. Oh, I don't I don't think this is for the crease. I don't know. I'm not enjoying that. Let's take the bigger brush. The, uh, the brushes feel super thin in my hand. Even though they don't look it, they're really not, but they just feel it. And they're nice and light, which is nice. And the bristles are soft, so they feel good on the eye. So far, I'm liking it. I think I'm gonna go in with uh, probably this one. Just darken up the crease. I'm gonna drop it down to the corner. You know, when you have hooded eyes, like me, like a lot of mature people, you need to bring that uh, color up higher, kind of creating a new crease in your eye. Because otherwise, it's going to get lost when you open your eyes, unfortunately. Ooh, ooh. I just wanted to show you something. So you see where I put it, even though it's still a little bit above my crease, it's not up high enough. Watch. All right. So, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to show you something. It's not working. All right. I'm going to open. I'm going to close my eye. You see where it is. Watch when I open my eyes. It's gone. It is not there. I mean, it's there, but you don't see it. So that's what I mean by taking it and going up a little higher than where you think you would put it. So the next color I am going to use, hmm, I'm thinking um, for now, I'm gonna try this and let's just see um, how dark it is, I'm not sure, because this is an orangey brown and this is still a deeper orangey brown. So let's let's just see. I'm gonna put it, start it in my corner. Oh, oh, I like that. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of it and further deeper up, further deepen up the crease. Not too much, I didn't, put, I didn't put a lot in there because I am gonna darken it up with that dark brown. Okay, then I'm gonna try this with this triangular brush. I'm gonna take that dark brown and I'm gonna do this because, hmm, Let's see if it works. Um, I'm gonna make like a triangle there. So I'm just gonna kind of stamp it. Oh yeah, it kind of worked. I don't know. Wow, that was dark. Oh, look at that. It's almost like a winged eyeliner. I'm not doing it. I'm gonna go in now and uh, blend it out with the fluffy brush. Ooh. Wow, that color's hard to blend. Wow, that sure is hard to blend. It's not blending so easily. I'm gonna bring a tiny bit into the crease. Not all the way. You wanna deepen up that outer corner to help um, 
uh, what's the word I'm looking for? To help it, help the hood look like it's not there. Help minimize it, that's the word I'm looking for. You know the worst thing you can do when you have hooded eyes is put a, a shimmer right there because that brings, it brings out whatever it's covering and it'll bring out that hood. Maybe one day I'll show you, but you know what it is? By the time I get to this point, I don't want to ruin my makeup. I'm going to take an even fluffier brush and I'm going to just go in and blend everything together. Get rid of those harsh lines. So what I think I'm gonna put on my lid is, I'm gonna go in again with that right there. I'm just gonna start with that. And I'm just gonna tap it. I'm not cutting my crease, but I'm just gonna tap it on my, all over the bottom of my lid, or the, you know, all over my lid. And then I'm gonna go in with my finger with this shimmer shade right here what it looks like oh it's kind of gold kind of didn't want the gold I was hoping it was a uh, brighter all right I have to be honest with you I don't like that I don't know it's just too dark for my eyes or for, for the look that I wanted so what I'm gonna do is I have this uh, palette from Kypris and it's a bunch of shimmers and I'm gonna take that white one there because I like to be lighter on my lid just to try and lighten it up a little bit. Oh, it's so pretty too. And then really quick, I am going to blend it. It's actually not giving me what I really wanted, but what I am going to do is I'm going to take this light shade right here and blend it out and go all the way to the brow bone so that I have some eyeshadow on up there. And I'm going to go just dipping back into all those colors and define this again. Cause I, I think it kind of gets lost when you do your lid. And the dark brown again in the corner. Wow, that really is dark, really pigmented and a bit difficult to blend out. So be careful with that one. Oh, see that? You know what I have found, because I forgot to do a setting spray, I'm starting to set crease. Oh yeah, everything's creasing. Ah! So I'm gonna go in with my sponge and just tap out those creases. Even with setting powder, it creased. I'm gonna use my uh, Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. I think I'm gonna spray my sponge with setting spray and put it right where it creased the worst. All right, next is uh, something under the eyes. So I am not gonna go in with that dark brown for sure. And take a pencil brush and I probably, I think I'm just gonna go in with the lightest brown. Um, hopefully it's not too dark. But I'm only going about halfway and then with a small blending brush, I'm gonna take this light color here and just blend it out. That's gonna be it under the eyes. I have from ColourPop from the uh, Royal Beauty Christie collection, uh, one of the browns and it's already come off. So I think it was woodsy it was called, but we're gonna, we're gonna use that. And I think I'm gonna, I don't know yet, let's see. I'm gonna start in the corner. Yeah, you see, oh, it's hard to tell because of that dark brown. But I'm gonna just line uh, real slow. It's not a very dark brown. I'm gonna line the bottom, just the lash line. And I only went almost halfway, not even halfway, just like that. And then again from ColourPop, I have a nude liner and I am going to tight line my waterline with that. It just helps, um, especially mature skinned women, um, for their eyes to pop a little bit. Get, make them look a little more refreshed, I think. 
Another trick I have for everybody is, um, especially if you have tiny little eyelashes, which happens when we get older, we start losing uh, eyelashes, is to tight line your upper waterline with black. This is the Urban Decay 24-7 uh, waterline pencil in the shade Legend, which is black. So the purpose of that is when you do this, you deepen up your lash bed and it just makes it seem like you have thicker lashes. You see the difference? It just makes me look like you can see my lashes now. Okay, now, this might seem like a lot of work to some, but when you have tiny little lashes and you don't want to put eyelashes on, this is a great way to make it seem like your eyelashes are fake. Um, first thing we're going to do is curl the eyelash. Now, my eyelashes are so tiny, they actually have difficulty getting in here. However, um, you know, if your eyelashes grow straight, a lot of people's do. There's something in the formulation of... Um, waterproof mascara that keeps those lashes curled. So if you have straight lashes, try using waterproof mascara. See how it works for you. Okay, first thing I have here is, this is all from Lancome, all three products. So we have, uh, and I got these from Ulta, the minis, so you don't have to spend a lot of money. I have a primer. Then I have a lash of a lengthener and a mascara for fullness. Don't ask me which is which because I forget. But the primer, it's a white primer. That's what it looks like. It. I don't know why. It just, ow, it just makes my lashes look so thick. If you could see this in real life, you would understand. I mean, it's hard My lashes already look longer. I don't know if you could see that. And I just, I just prime the top. I don't need giant spider legs on the bottom. And then I go in with, this I think is the lengthening one, uh, Lancome Definisols. I don't know. It's probably in French. I don't know how to say it. And the other one is the Monsieur Big. Oh, so this is the full, the the one for fullness, and this is the one for lengthening. So I like to go in with the lengthening one first and start at the root and wiggle your way up. Now I'm gonna go in with the Monsieur, Monsieur, Monsieur Big for fullness as my second coat. And you do this the same exact way you put on mascara, start at the root, and wiggle it through. Look at that. In real life, they look huge. Let me get up close. They're actually touching my hood. And because I don't really want to lengthen my lower lashes, I'm just going to use the Monsoor Big on my lower lash. So anybody out there with tiny little lashes or light lashes like me, do yourself a favor, go to Ulta and get your uh, Lancome, the three, they come in a three pack just like this, and you will have beautiful long lashes. Okay, now, for the last um, new tip, new technique that I just learned, and I have no idea if it's going to work. So we're going to see. Okay, so you remember I put that lip plumper on. I don't know about you, but I don't see a difference in my lip. However, she suggested whoo, lining your lips in a white pencil. Like overlining it, I guess, a little bit. Not by much. So we're gonna start, we're gonna do that. So the premise for this was, as we get older, we lose that, um, I don't remember the name of it. She said the name of it. But basically that distinction that we have between our lip and our skin, we start losing that. And this is supposed to help create that and make our lips look a little fuller. So we'll see. 
So the next thing you do is blend it in a little bit because you don't want a harsh line. Now, I have not tried this. This is a first impressions try. Okay. So you can see the white is still there. And then she said to take a nude uh, lip liner. So I'm going to use the Real Heart I Am Confident lip liner and line your lips. And I do believe she said at this point, you just line your lips. Don't overline it. And then go ahead and blot it. Kind of blend the two together. And this is supposed to create that distinction. I don't know. Um, I don't know that it really has. And certainly the lip plumper did nothing for my lips. Like that cracks me up when you see uh, these companies make their lip plumpers and they put it on somebody with these luscious lips and they just like, oh, look how big my lips look. Try putting it on somebody like me. <laughs> Cause shoot, if it worked and I didn't have to get lip fillers, no needles or whatever, I would do it for sure. I don't get lip fillers clearly. I have nothing against it. I would do it. Okay. So it left behind a little uh, highlight, I guess. And it does kind of, you know, yeah, I guess it kind of looks like, I don't know. Honestly, it didn't make such a difference that I would go to all the trouble. But it did make a difference. And you just go in with your favorite lipstick and that lip plumper again. I'm gonna use the Natasha Denona, um, bear, uh, what is this? I need a nude in uh, shade Amorosa because I really love the color and the uh, shine or whatever it's called, the formula. I don't know. We're gonna see after I'm done. I actually forgot uh, the last step is the lipstick to see if it made a difference. We're gonna see. I don't know. Do you think it made my lips look bigger? Hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury one because it, I don't know, it was a little uh, tinglier. Ah. Anyway, what do you guys think? Oh, I forgot something. The last thing, and this is not a tip or trick. This is just me with my new favorite highlighter from Laura Mercier from BoxyCharm. I don't know why, I just love this stuff. It is the shade Highlight 01, it's called. And I think it looks beautiful on my mature skin. So maybe it is a little tip. Okay, I'm gonna take a brush like that and just, you know, get a good amount but then tap it off. And then I'm gonna, you see how beautiful that is? I don't know what it is. It's not that like blinding, like you see people with neon signs on themselves and you know, to each his own, who cares? But uh, I don't know, I just think it looks beautiful. I love it. See that? I like to bring it down. I don't care what anybody says. But there are really no rules in makeup. It's what you feel comfortable wearing. And I'm gonna put a little bit up here. Uh, on my Cupid's bow, which I should have done already. And I'm gonna put, with my finger, the bridge of my nose. And where the sun would hit. And the tip of my nose. Not too much. I have to tell you, I'm feeling some sort of way about myself. Oh my God, I feel beautiful. I think my skin looks great. Let me get a, let me get a close up view for you guys. We're working on the hair, <laughs> but look at it. Holy crap. I think I found the techniques to use to make me or feel better about foundation. So now the new thing I'm gonna be doing is going back into all the foundation that I have 
and applying it this way and seeing how I like it. Oh my God, I love this. Talk about red hot and flashy. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and uh, try out some of these tips or techniques or whatever we want to call them for your mature skin. Do me a favor. If you have Instagram, take a selfie of yourself looking uh, red hot and tag me in it. Oh my God, I'm at Red Hot and Flashy on Instagram. I would love to see what you guys have done and how you all look, because I know that we are red hot. The hell with the flashy part. <laughs> if you liked today's video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing. Join our family. Until next time, everybody. Bye. <laughs>